بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم السلام عليكم It is my honor and privilege to welcome you all to the Classical Arabic and Foundational Islamic Sciences graduation. Uh, my name is Haris Qutsi. I'm a graduate from the Alamiya program of 2020. And to begin our program, I'd like to introduce the director of Qalam Institute, Sheikh Abdul Nasser Jangda. Bismillahi walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Alhamdulillah, I wanted to take the opportunity to primarily just welcome everyone here today uh, We're very honored, we're very pleased and very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for this really beautiful and joyous occasion This occasion here today, this gathering today is a realization and a furthering of a legacy that is more than 1400 years old. I was thinking a lot about this particular narration that is found in many of the books of Hadith, particularly the book of Imam At-Tirmidhi, in which Kathir ibn Qais, he mentions that, كُنْتُ جَالِسًا مَعَا أَبِي الدَّرْدَى فِي مَسْجِدِ دَمِشْقِ I was sitting with Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, who was one of the most sage and senior and wise and knowledgeable of the companions of the Prophet So he says, I was sitting with him in the main mosque of Damascus. And while I was sitting there, فَجَاءَ رَجُلٌ فَقَالَ يَا أَبَا الدَّرْدَى جِئْتُكَ مِنْ مَدِينَةِ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ a man approached Abu Darda as I was sitting with him and he said, Oh Abu Darda, I have come to you from Medina. I have come to you from Medina. Why? Li hadithin. For a single hadith. Balagani. That I have learned annaka tuhadithuhu an Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That I have learned that you narrate this hadith directly from the Prophet sallallahu I've heard it from a lot of people, and everyone narrates it through you. And so I said, let me come, let me try to get that narration directly from you. But I had to travel all the way from Medina to Damascus in order to be able to do that. And Abu Darda asked him, Am I to be hajatin? You have no other business here? He said, no, I have no other business here. He even then asks him, Am I to be tijaratin? You don't have any kind of like maybe... Work related, you know, kind of double up. And he said, No, nothing work related. I only came to get this particular narration. And then he actually narrates the hadith to him, which is pertaining to the learning and the knowledge of this deen that man salaka tariqan yabtaghi fihi ilman. That somebody who treads a path, who sets out, who takes it upon themselves to go out of their way, to change their situation, to inconvenience themselves, to be able to learn this deen and this religion, then God shall facilitate the path to paradise for them. And so that, that hadith and that beautiful moment what that represents, we hope, we pray, our hope, our dream, and you know, our optimism makes us believe that this gathering here today is a continuation of that tradition and that legacy. So we're very happy, very excited to welcome everyone here today. Uh, we hope that inshallah everyone has a very happy and beautiful and inspiring uh, afternoon, insha'Allah, um, seeing these students, you know, uh, be congratulated on their amazing achievement and accomplishment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of them. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakumullah khair, Shaykh. <coughs> 
Inshallah, I'm going to invite Hafiz Burhan Muhammad up here to begin our program with recitation of the Quran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. I'lamu anna ma al-hayatu al-dunya la'ibu wa lahu wa zinah. وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد كمثل غيث أعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا ثم يكون حطاما وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومغفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور سابقوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم وجنة وجنة عرضها كعرض السماء والأرض أعدت للذين آمنوا بالله ورسله ذلك فضل الله يؤتيه من يشاء والله ذو الفضل العظيم ما أصاب من مصيبة في الأرض ولا في أنفسكم إلا في كتاب ولا في أنفسكم إلا في كتاب من قبل أن نبرأها إن ذلك على الله يسير لكي لا تأسوا على ما فاتكم ولا تفرحوا بما آتاكم والله لا يحب كل مختال فخور الذين يبخلون ويأمرون الناس سبالبخل ومن يتول فإن الله هو الغني الحميد تكبير MashaAllah, Zakhla Khair for the recitation. Next, I'd like to invite up Ustada Zara Huda to give a speech. Rabbish Rahri, Sadri, Silni, Amni, Wahlu, Okda, Tamni, Sani, Yafkahu, Kauri, Amin. I wanted to start off by welcoming everybody. Um, we're so happy to have everyone here, the friends and the families of the graduates, um, just celebrating this joyous occasion. Um, alhamdulillah, we're, I've met a couple of you guys and it's been an honor. Um, and I hope to meet the rest of you guys as the day progresses, inshallah. Um, just to start with, um, the, this past year, I, I've been extremely, extremely blessed to have spent um, my time in the service of these graduates before us today. I've 
seen them from the beginning until now. I've seen their journey from day one all the way up until now. And mashallah, the uh, growth and the, um, their understanding is absolutely remarkable. Mashallah, tabarakallah. One of the most memorable moments, or I'd say a couple of the most memorable moments this year was during Ramadan when I would be praying maybe side by side next to some of the sisters. And after the imam would, um, would be reciting, after every two rakahs, one of the sisters, or I'd get a, a, a message in general from one of the students saying that, wow, I actually understood what the imam was reciting. And that was one of the most, I'd say, fulfilling um, uh, moments for me here in this position. Why? Because I remember that moment for myself as well. And I remember how I would love for others to experience this, mo this moment as well. And if they did, how transformative the world would become. If we could only connect with the Quran just a bit more. Um, so I don't have much time. Um, I did want to spend the last two and a half minutes uh, just addressing the graduates themselves with one last advice or one last reflection. And that one last reflection is, I want you guys to remember the time in class we were reflecting on Surah Al-Rahman. We studied Surah Al-Rahman along with many other surahs. Um, in particular, one thing we had mentioned about Surah Al-Rahman just within the first two ayat, ayahs uh, of Surah Al-Rahman, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن the most merciful taught the Quran. The scholars of tafsir, some of them say that one of the wisdoms of just this mention in the beginning of a surah, which is known to be replete full of blessings or reminders of blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that him subhanahu wa ta'ala teaching the Quran is one of the, or rather it is the most majestic, it is the greatest gift to mankind. Alhamdulillah. So, my advice to students um, who are graduating is the following, that if you find a moment where you're reading and you understand something or you have that deeper moment of connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his book, I hope that uh, this beautiful feeling of overwhelming gratitude envelops your hearts and you don't numb it, don't distract yourselves from it like we do so many other things. Allow yourself to soak it in, sit with it, reflect on it, hold it with you, and then remember it later on. Use it as a catalyst to want to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even more in yourselves and your actions. Um, and my last dua that I want to make um, with the 30 seconds that I have left is the following. Um, two things, remember to always renew your intentions, renew, uh, renewing our intentions, that's something we practice in class, as well as giving gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the many blessings that always surround us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the Qur'an the light of our hearts, the nur of our lives. Um, may he subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us guidance through it, as well as our families. Ameen. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta sami'a al-alim wa taba alayna inna kanta tawwab al-rahim. Jazakumullah al-khayna. <laughs> Next, inshallah, I'd like to invite the first of our student speakers, Sister Ruhama. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa hlul uqdata min lisani yafqahu qawli. Assalamu alaikum, students, parents, faculty, staff, and esteemed guests. Alhamdulillah, it's really good to see you guys. Before we dive into the depths of our topic today, let me start with a question that has perplexed humanity for centuries. Is it okay to eat Chick-fil-A? <laughs> After my one singular year at Qalam, I have found the answer. And it is, 
You should go to Cullen first. <laughs> now that I have your attention and hopefully a smile on your face, let's embark this journey of knowledge, reflection, and inspiration. Our journey really just started with an intention, right? I, I can't really speak for the intention of everyone, but I can speak on my intention. It really just revolved around a couple of questions. How could I go years of praying and not understand what I'm saying? How could I go years of standing in we and not being able to understand what I'm listening to? How could I go years of reading the Quran and not being able to understand what I'm reading? There's a profound reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed and preserved the Quran in Arabic. So I wanted to be able to understand this guidance that our creator has left for mankind. So just like that, in fall of 2022, I started year one with my classmates. From the early years of trying to recite our Arabic pronouns without trying to sound like we were gargling marbles in our mouth, to the art of reading text without harakat, we've honestly come a long way. Our journey has been a blend of intellectual growth, spiritual enlightenment, and you know the occasional struggle of trying to find food on campus when we didn't feel like going out. We've spent countless hours engrossed in our study of Arabic and Islamic studies, like fiqh and hadith and the vastness of spirituality. But let's not forget the moment of absolute confusion when we entered the world of irregular sarf and wondered if we were playing a game of twister with our tongues, trying to contort it into a position that we've never even thought possible. Oh, and the joy of reflecting over the verses of Quran and then forgetting to share it in class, except for one guy, <laughs> only to have it resurface during random moments like a car ride home. And who could forget our plethora of questions on fiqh matters that left us questioning our own sanity and definitely wondering if we were secretly auditioning to be a reporter at a press conference. But amidst the seriousness of our studies, we've shared beloved moments that have bound us together like a perfectly folded samosa, bringing together a delightful blend of flavors and creating a bond one fold at a time. From study sessions fueled by endless cups of coffee to our heartfelt conversations under the stars during our retreats, we've definitely formed a very memorable connection. These moments, we have woven a tapestry of companionship, knowledge, and shared experiences that will forever warm our hearts, just like a fresh batch of naan straight from a tandoor oven. We have formed a community where we could support one another, benefit from the ultimate care and guidance from our teachers, and remind ourselves that even in the pursuit of knowledge, what really brought us together was that we wanted to just be closer to our Lord. So. Our journey did come with a lot of wins. The first thing is you definitely know more than what you started with. You put in that effort, you did the extra mile, and you definitely reaped more than what you sowed. Just opening a page of Quran and being able to recognize even a single pronoun, it's a huge blessing. Your relationship with this knowledge, it isn't a certificate and I'm done, but it's something that you transformed as a person. You grew closer to your creator and possibly had a very unhealthy relationship with caffeine, but still, our accomplishment is from Allah, who gave us this opportunity, who positioned us by his absolute perfect plan for us to be students of knowledge here today. And so despite surviving an ice storm, you know, lost key cards, and so who are fest crowds, we were still consistent in our studies, we are still consistent in our studies, and we you know, learned this for the sake of Allah, and alhamdulillah, we reached a milestone. And none of our accomplishments could have been done without our amazing parents and guardians who raised us to be people who wanted to study the deen, and to our beloved teachers who prioritized and deeply cared about each and every student, and to our mentors and friends who created our enriching journey here. As we stand here equipped with the tools to further our understanding of Arabic knowledge, Islamic teachings, and a passion for serving our communities, we are like a squad of spiritual superheroes. We've learned the art of translating Arabic, hopefully, and our journey of learning fiqh and hadith is more impressive than any sort of acrobatic feat, hopefully. <laughs> 
Now, as we prepare to embrace our future endeavors, let me offer you some lighthearted words of wisdom. Remember, dear graduates, each one of you has a unique superpower. Whether it's the potential that you showed in class or being someone who inspires others to seek knowledge, together, your talent and humility will be, whatever you strive in will be pleasing to Allah as long as you have the right intention. Secondly, when faced with challenge, it's okay to treat yourself to a little bit of chocolate, but more importantly, you should trust Allah and follow in the footsteps of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in times of doubt, remember that Imam Malik Rahimahullah once said, I don't know. And he was one of the greatest scholars of our tradition. So embrace the beauty of lifelong learning, be humble in your knowledge, and don't be afraid to ask for help. As we move forward, let's cherish the bonds we formed together here, celebrate our accomplishments, and be grateful for the knowledge that we've acquired. Remember that you are the torchbearers of Islam, carrying the light of knowledge and compassion in a world that really needs it more than ever. So class of 2023, congratulations, my superhero classmates. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, 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 bless your future endeavors to be filled with fulfillment and wisdom and reward our parents, family, and spouses who have sacrificed a lot for us to be here. Bless our cherished teachers whose unwavering commitment to their students shines even amidst their packed schedules. And to our mentors and friends who played a vital role in shaping our experience here at Kalam Seminary. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower blessings upon anyone who gave any sort of contribution to our spiritual and educational development. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Zakalkhay, Sister Ruhama. Next, inshallah, I'm going to call the second student speaker for the Arabic class, Brother Tahir Qasim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yasirli amri. Wa ahlul uqtatan min lisani fqahu qawli. Rabbi zinni ilma. Ameen. 861 ayat translated. 823 Zoom recordings watched. 284 days passed since the first day of school. 150 Google Classroom homework submissions assigned. 132 eye clickers clicked. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> 10 full surahs translated. Six daily periods attended. One objective in mind. Alhamdulillah, we made it. Alhamdulillah for the ups, the downs, and everything in between that led us to where we are today. Like Ustad Zara said first thing every morning, Let's show shukr to Allah for the blessings he showered us with, such as the many people he put in our lives that made this possible. Our teachers, our family, our friends, both those that are here today and those that are not. Say alhamdulillah. One of the beautiful things about year one is how many different things it represents to each and every one of us. To some, it represents the start of a life of service to the deen, as an imam, mufti, youth director. Y'all should remember the name Milad Faizi. Because inshallah, one day, they'll be shaken in front of there. <laughs> to others, it was a way to pursue their passion of connecting to the deen while working or taking care of their families. Sitting next to me some days in class was a dentist, a senior software developer, a businessman, or even a professional reseller. Yeah. <laughs> okay. To others, like myself, it was a much needed break, a recalibration. After four grueling years of being a double major pre-med in college, treating most of my classes just as a number called the GPA, I forgot what it felt to learn something that I truly needed, something my soul needed. Knowledge that just wasn't limited to the words on a paper, but that which positively impacted every single part of my daily life. 
so that when I go back into the realm of secular education, into medical school, I can walk with a renewed, refreshed sense of purpose, inshallah. Regardless of why we are here, our ultimate objective was the same beautiful goal of connecting with the last revelation given to mankind, delivered by the best of humanity, the Quran. Even though I was chosen to speak to you all today, much to the surprise of some of my classmates, Khalid, <coughs> I'm sure if any one of you were up here, you would agree. And what's beautiful about this goal is that there are no numbers or KPIs we have to hit to show that we reached it. What ultimately, what ultimately matters is if you, the nervous student that walked into this building nine months ago, not knowing what to expect at all, is walking out of these doors today as a better person, a better Muslim. Whether it's feeling a deeper connection in Salah or while reading the Quran, showing nobility in the face of ignorance, doing more favors for your friends in need, such as letting Hadi borrow your car for his driver's test, <laughs> any change means success. Any change means success. And I'm sure each and every one of us has a success story. Always be grateful for that and do not let anyone let you think differently. So let's keep making success stories by staying connected to the sacred knowledge in any capacity we can. Let us continue being students, experiencing the miraculous, transformative nature of the Quran firsthand throughout the rest of our lives, inshallah. Let us sense a positive change constantly occurring within ourselves, regardless of how little at a time it does happen. The beauty is within the consistency because over time, we can become totally new people in a sustainable, manageable manner. Like Ustada Fatima once iconically said in class, it's okay to be mid. And during our lifelong journeys of learning, let us stay connected with one another to encourage each other and to be there for each other. Although we may not be sending that Ustad is here message or Sheikh is here message in Telegram anymore, having access to a group of 137 bright individuals just one message away will help us continue to move forward together. And lastly, as Ustad Ubaidullah told us back in December, when we finished translating our first full surah, Surah Yusuf, let us ask Allah for forgiveness of our shortcomings along this journey. Let us ask Allah for acceptance of our good actions and intentions. And lastly, let us ask Allah to allow us to continue along this path to open doors and opportunities that we know about and those that we don't know about. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakallahu khayran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Barakallah fiqh, zakallah khair, brother Tahir. Uh, Inshallah, the next speaker is the one who has made all of these graduates into students and graduates, Ustad Ubaidullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassil li amri wa ahlul uqdata min lisani yafqahu qawli, ameen. I'd like to start off by welcoming everyone to the certificate ceremony of the year one classical Arabic program. I say certificate ceremony, I'm pretty sure it's on this beautiful plaque right here. Again, like I say every year, it's a graduation, okay? But you still have a long way to go. As long as you guys understand that, we'll call it a graduation, you know, because it's just easier to say, but you're just getting certificates today, inshallah. <laughs> I'd like to start off by saying, alhamdulillah, by the blessing of Allah, by all of your du'as, by the du'as of your families and your loved ones and your support system, we made it. We finally made it to this point, a point that maybe we didn't anticipate we would ever make it to, especially when we first got together on day one. On day one, you got together and I kept telling you or reminding you that the person next to you is not your friend yet. I kept telling you your table neighbor person. But hopefully, throughout this year, you've developed bonds, you've developed friendships. Now there is a connection all this time later. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes that a lasting relationship for all of you. Today is a day of celebration, enjoyment, gratitude, and reflection. Honestly, everything I was going to say was already said, which is nice, it means they were listening. Um, as Mufti Kamani said, they remembered the specific dua that was made at the end of translating a surah. That's a lot of pressure, that the things we say they listen to, but alhamdulillah, 
at the end of it all, it's a huge honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with students such as these. It's hard to believe, but this is the fifth graduating class of this program. And I say that just kind of as a reminder for myself and a reminder for a lot of the students in this room that may or may, may, or may not be getting a certificate or graduating today. But it's a testament to all of you trusting us. And I go back five years because that was the time when this program was just launched. There was, no one knew what it was, but there was a handful of people who trusted and came and studied. And alhamdulillah, that is still continuing to this day. And it's that trust that I would really sincerely like to thank all of you for. Because the reality is, most of you didn't really know who I am. Didn't really know who Ustad Azara was before the first day. But alhamdulillah, you came with a sincere intention you had this commitment, you had this desire, and you trusted us, and you took a leap of faith, and we hope that we honored your trust and your commitment. I'd like to thank the families and the support system of this class that allowed them to do this. And of course, you know, when I talk about commitment and sacrifice, when you talk about students that came full time, it's a little bit easier to understand. You're saying that, you know, people moved here, they left their homes, or, you know, they left their house for this many hours, but really, I want to highlight also the students that committed online and committed to showing up on Zoom every day, whether they turn their video on or not. I'm not going to get mad at them today. Um, but I have to say, it would have been easier when you come up to me at a convention and be like, do you know who I am? And I'm like, I have no idea. I've never seen your face before. But alhamdulillah, I do want to highlight their commitment because you know, we talk about sacrifice and we talk about full-time students in person, but it takes a certain level of commitment to say, I'm going to dedicate to this despite having responsibilities, despite working, despite um, you know, juggling so many different things, I'm going to, in my home, find a way to block out the distractions and commit to this thing, right? And I don't want, not, they may or may not be here, alhamdulillah, a lot of students that were joining us online were able to come in person, but the reality is a bulk of the names that I'm going to read are students that fall into that category, that weren't in person, but really put in the time and the effort and the commitment that honestly I don't fully understand because I'm the kind of person that probably could never do that, could not commit to a screen and learning from a recording or learning through a chat box. And um, it's just very difficult and I really applaud them and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases them. Now, I want to kind of just highlight a few reflections and a few last pieces of advice. I know we say last pieces of advice a lot. It's really dramatic, but I think today's finally the day to be dramatic. I've been putting it off. Um, the first thing I want you guys to take away is that beyond the technical knowledge that you gained, beyond the ability to break down a verse, translate some, translate Quran, vowel a text that you know, doesn't have vowels and try to put the words together so it makes sense and it's not just a jumble of words. And again, as some of you highlighted, hopefully you're able to do that. You're not, it's a journey, hopefully you've started on that path. I want you to remember what your main objective was. That that wasn't really the main objective. The main objective was your connection with the Quran. And every single person who spoke before me has highlighted that. And I have to highlight it as well because it's really at the core of what we're trying to do um, in this program. And I want all of you to remember that if you don't take anything else from this program, please keep that relationship that you've started to build with the Quran. Make the Quran your companion. Make the Quran's perspective your perspective. Make the Quran's worldview, the way it teaches you to look at the world and understand the world, try to internalize that. So that when you need it, through difficult times, the Quran will be a comfort for you. And make the Quran the main constant in your life. The second thing is that we really try to foster a specific environment. We try to kind of balance the rigor of studying Arabic and the technicality of it all. But we also try to make sure you guys make it to the end and you survive and you're happy, healthy human beings at the end and you're not just whatever else. We don't want to highlight the bad stuff. But hopefully you survive and you thrive throughout this program and Arabic doesn't break you, right? We wanted to, we wanted to enrich you. So I remind you of that because I want you to be people who foster that environment wherever you can. 
right? If you got a taste of that environment, it was very intentional. It's the environment that we were taught in. It's the environment that our teachers tried to foster. And wherever you are, whatever environment you're in, whatever circle of influence you have, try to make people fall in love with the Quran. Try to make excuses for people to come closer to the Quran. Don't find reasons to push people away. That's really one of the most beautiful things that you can do, is spread this love that you've developed, that you've cultivated, try to spread it to others. And the best way to do that is to embody the character of the Prophet ﷺ. Embody that prophetic character so that you can conduct yourself and carry yourself with the character of the Prophet and you can hopefully incorporate that wisdom of the Prophet ﷺ. And the last thing, and the last kind of piece of advice I'll share with you is that all of you came here with a noble and sincere intention and you put some effort behind it to accomplish something great. And that's why we're here, certi cert certification ceremony, uh, it's just words at this point. It's, I don't know what to call it anymore. This graduation ceremony. It's a testament to what happens when you respond to a good intention that Allah has put in your heart. And I want you to think about that because this is just one manifestation of that. You had this desire, you had this sincere intention to try to understand the words of Allah, to come closer to Allah, and then you put some work behind it. You put some effort forth. The effort wasn't perfect. The effort, sometimes you were on a high, you were crushing it. Some days were difficult. Some days you couldn't get out of bed. Some days you didn't want to get out of bed and come teach. Who said that? <laughs> but you tried, and you put the effort in. And you got to reap the reward of that. And I want you to take that same energy to other actions of good that you can do. And whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts that desire for good in your heart, don't ignore it. As Ustad Azara said, kind of live in it, appreciate it. And don't just think about it, but put some effort behind it. And I've talked to you about this before, that this idea of when you have a good intention, don't just let it be an intention. Put some action behind it. And you'll reap the reward, inshallah, just like you're experiencing today. This joy that you're feeling at the end of all this work that you've done, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you more of that. And on the other side of it, if, if shaitan puts some doubt in your heart, and shaitan tries to get you to disobey Allah, and tries to get you to do something that is displeasing to Allah, run away. Just as quickly run away and rush to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rush to the book of Allah. Rush to that connection that you've made with the book of Allah. And if you've learned anything, trust the process when you have setbacks. Reevaluate how you're approaching it, but keep going. And be flexible and be hopeful and enjoy the process. And now I'm going to move into the part where I read out the names. Alhamdulillah, there's going to be a lot of names, so I'm going to ask for everyone's patience and really silence in a way because some of the names you're not going to see people walk up and grab a certificate. Um, but before I call out the names, again, I want to remind everyone, these students that I'm going to call, I want you to understand who they are. These are people who made an intention for the sake of Allah and they made lots of dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to facilitate that intention. And then they took some action and they put in some work and they worked really hard and they put tried to put their best foot forward, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened some doors for them, and today we're honoring their hard work and their noble intention. So I'd like to invite up um, Ustad Azara and Sheikh Abdul Nasser, is here? Oh, Sheikh Abdul Nasser to um, hand out the certificates, inshallah. As I call out the names, if you are here, inshallah, then please um, walk up and you can grab your certificate. Um, I'm gonna keep saying certificate, diploma, whatever you wanna call it. On this side. Right. Yeah, the diplomas are all there. Yeah. Ustada Fatima, shall I begin? Can I begin calling the name? All right, bismillah. 
All right, first up, I'd like to call up Alian Qureshi. I think we can go this way, yeah. Uh -huh. Next up, Abdul Qadir Kareem. You're here, yeah. Abdullah Sadruddin. Where are you at? Abdurrahman Shazad. Adam Dire. Adil Khawaja. Aisha Haq. Raik Ahsan. Ahmed Siddiqui. Aisha Ahmed. Aisha Yusuf, Aisha Kareem, Aisha Qureshi. This is why you don't alphabetize by first name. I think I, I learned my lesson. Ala Aldiri, Alina Fayaz, Alexandra Fox. Ali Siddiqui, Aliza Usmani, Aman Mubin, Aman Sayed, Amatullah Sayed, Ammar Hussein, sorry, Amatullah, I messed up her name, I'm sorry, Amatullah Williams, I apologize. Okay. You gotta slow down. There's a backlog. <laughs> I'm not even gonna tell you how many I've left, but it's serious. <laughs> if you know who I am, come up and get your diploma. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, that's not. We're not gonna play that game. <laughs> Can't play that game. I think, shake. I'm gonna Yes. Sorry, I'm sorry. We're gonna just do a bit of an adjustment because Alhamdulillah, mashallah, there's so many of you. Um, if I call your name, you can just stay seated and then we'll take a pause after for everyone to grab their diploma, inshallah. Um, there's just traffic jam going on, um, but inshallah, it'll be okay, alhamdulillah. All right, so let me pick up where I left off. Um, Ariba Wahid, you can still clap. Yeah, Artesia Susanto. Bilal Haroon. Dania Sadiq. Danielle Nadim, Deanna Musaitif, Darra Budicha. You guys are so nice. I love how the, the volume. Um, Edeen Ibrik, Fatima Malik, Fatima Jamil, Fatima Nakvi, Fozia Shazad. Fida Riyas, Haris Khan, Haris Idi, Hadi Abdullah, Hawa Fufana, Huda Sadat, Hud Awais, Ibrahim Hussein, Imran Mumtaz, Isa Ghalib, Izza Ahmed, Khalid Javid, Kosar Dakani, Maha Wasik, 
Mahim Hassan, Maliha Modi, Munawara Begum, Maram Razik, Maryam Gadura, Milad Faizi, Minhal Sheikh, Michael Parchment, Michael Shifra, Miriam Tisdale, Muhammad Ibrahim, Muhammad Subhan, Momin Baig, Muniba Ijazi, Muhammad Hassan, Nada Sager, Nawal Yusuf, Nada Hassan, Nima Haq, Noor Khan, Noor Naeem, Noor Baig, Noura Ahmed, Noura Abu Shaban, Umar Galaria, Rabia Azam, Rabiha Asdi, Rabia Zahir, Rayan Rahman, Rayan Arshad, Rayan Taj, Ruhama Mahmoud, Sadia Tariq, Sara Khan, Salvi Ahsan, Sama Aid, Samira Sattar, Sara Abu Snani, Sara Harun Yusuf, Sara Ismail, Sara Al Kik, Shams Al Kamil, Suleiman Ali, Sumeya Irfan, Sumeya Danani, Sydney Roth, Sayyid Suleiman, Tahir Aziz, Tahir Qasim, Tayba Muhammad, Tahmina Ruhi, Umayma Masay, Unaysa Kidwai, Uruj Ansari, Wajiha Fatima, Jamila Musa, Yasmin Zarug, Zaid Sayyid, Zainab Al Ghazar, and Zainab Hashmi. Alhamdulillah. All right, so I'd like to just close with a quick dua for, these, for my students. It is truly my honor to be your teacher. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts whatever good he has utilized me for, and I seek forgiveness for my shortcomings. I pray that Allah increases all of you in knowledge and understanding, in humility and steadfastness. I pray that Allah continues to inspire you to do good and gives you the strength to stay away from temptation and desire. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this Quran a proof for us and not against us on the Day of Judgment. I pray that Allah makes this Quran a proof for us and not against us on the Day of Judgment. There have been many challenges and difficulties faced by these students this year. They dealt with sickness and loss of loved ones. They tried to come closer to you through these difficulties by holding tight to your book and your message, O oh Allah. Please accept from them and give them strength and steadfastness. Make them a means of sadaqa jariya for those that they have lost. Give them patience, clarity, and comfort as they await the day when they will be reunited with their loved ones under your shade, enveloped in your mercy, O oh Allah. We are parting for now, but I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to bless us with good company. I pray he unites us for what is good in this life, and if not in this life, then I pray that he unites us in Jannat al-Firdaus in the company of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I ask everyone who is watching and everyone who is here today, please find some time later today Make special dua for these students, make special dua for my students, for my people. And I'd like to close by saying to the class of 2023 one last time, thank you for your energy, attention, and focus. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Zakallah khair, Fustadu Baylullah. To conclude our program, inshallah, I'd like to call the keynote speaker, Imam Tahir Anwar. Esteemed scholars and faculty, honorable students and seekers of knowledge, respected family members and loved ones, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
It's a great honor for me to be invited to speak before you this afternoon. We've gathered from all across town, the entire country, to join together and witness this amazing accomplishment. Years one and two are no less of an accomplishment than any other year of studies at Qalam. The Arabic and foundational Islamic studies program you have pursued is not the pursuit of learning a language. It's not to get familiar with the nuances of sentence structure or rules of fiqh. It's not to familiarize yourselves with the conjugation of verbs, the rafa', the nasab, the jar, the status of nouns, or to spit out all the huruf jar on demand in the middle of the night. It's also not about food, as some of you might have taken away from that first student speech. <laughs> this is all being learned and taught in order for us to be able to access and unlock the treasure we have as Muslims, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna anzalnahu Qur'anan arabiyyan la'allakum ta'aqilun. The pursuit of all of this has brought you together here at Qalam and working hard for the entire year or two has now brought you here to your graduation. Alhamdulillahi alladhi hadana lihadha wa ma kunna linahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah. This moment warrants immense gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity and tawfiq to tread, a, to tread a path that we call the path of knowledge. As Allah mentions in the Quran, and we were reminded in the khutbah earlier today, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. A path that was started with the command to read preceded by a hug. The beginning of revelation was preceded by a relationship, a bond, a close connection, and a tight squeeze. Fellow students of sacred knowledge, the experience at Qalam is a unique experience of learning. The learning experience is not limited to the classroom and textbooks. The learning experience includes interactions between you and your mentors and teachers. The learning is experienced through the camaraderie amongst yourselves. The learning is, ex the learning is experienced through the mutual love and attachment that you have to what Qalam stands for. I asked a Qalam student to describe their experience. By the way, it wasn't my son or my nephew. He responded and said, Qalam is my happy place, my safe place, where I feel safe despite all the craziness in my life going on. The teachers, the classmates, the schoolmates, the environment, all of it. Your qalam gear that I saw many of you wearing yesterday reads ta'lim, tarbiyah, and suhbah. You're not here just to seek knowledge, but to learn how to seek knowledge, to learn how that knowledge carries you, and how you ultimately carry it. This is what this path at qalam is all about. And le let me remind our graduating ones here that this is a path. A path that doesn't end after a one or two or five years for that matter. It is a very long path. A never-ending path. But a path nonetheless that has a destination which is the love and recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ma'rifah of Allah. Something that should be the goal of every believer and believers we are all. This is the reason why you as students found yourselves here. The love of Allah and the love of his messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We think we chose the path to knowledge to get closer to Allah. In reality, it's the path that chose us because of our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all have our unique stories on how we got here. For some, this choice came packaged with a challenge. For some, it was laced with doubts. For some, it was riddled with questions. For some, it was full of heartbreak. For many, it came with extreme sacrifice and trade-offs. But now, here you are, one or maybe two years later, with many of those things, inshallah, behind you. We're reminded if Allah brings you to it, He brings you through it. Now that you find yourselves here, the path should only be further traversed and sought. The love of Allah and His Prophet should further increase.
You're not on this path alone as you are here. You have families, friends, loved ones who have supported you. This is also a sacrifice for them. When you go back home, it will be a source of joy and happiness for your parents, your communities. They are also owed a portion in all of our du'as and well wishes. They're also owed an intense display of gratitude, mercy, and affection. Allah has facilitated a wonderful experience of seeking here for you all. The ease and comfort of knowledge being at your fingertips. Being accessible on site and online. That's cheating, by the way. But inshallah, it counts. The proliferation of innovative tools and techniques. The young man spoke about it a little while ago. Growing up in my time, and some of you may remember, and my whiteness tells you how seasoned I am, growing up in San Jose, California, finding books to study Arabic or study even the basics of fiqh was a task in and of itself. Most of what I learned out of happened to be in Urdu. And some of you may remember Ta'limul Haq. And we go back home, as we go back home to our neighborhoods and communities, keep in mind, you're no longer going back as yourselves alone. You're going back as amb ambassadors of sacred knowledge, as flag bearers of the knowledge, and above all, as students and pin bearers of Qalam. And ultimately, the Qur'an and Sunnah. Be a role model, be an inspiration, be what it is that you were looking for, to, looking for to get you here today. Work with ihsan, work with excellence. This is an opportunity that is rarely found and Allah chose you to be amongst those who found it. Many parents and family members and community members who facilitated it. What is next? Communities are thirsty. Go back to serve, but with humility. You have a lot to offer. Sure, the more we learn, we realize we don't know. But truly, start somewhere. Those youth in the Sunday schools would much rather have you as their teachers. I won't say anything else. <laughs> you will miss qalam, I get it. Some of you will cry today. But create a qalam in your own cities. Create a qalam where you live in your neighborhoods. For those of you that are masjid board members or key people in your community, advocate for these students. Get them involved in your local institutions. My fellow students, be patient, be humble. Sacred knowledge is not about leadership, it is about service. It is through that service we have seen our teachers grow. Their love for the deen is what brought them the honor that they have today. Their selfless service is what brought them these divine openings. And as I close, I share with you three things. Number one, become godly. Become Rabbani. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kunu Rabbaniyina bima kuntum tu'allimun al kitaba wa bima kuntum tadrusun. Become godly individuals in your lives. The second thing that I wish to share as I close, specifically as a parent and as a guest, as a host in some ways, Jazakallah khair to all the teachers the administrators, the volunteers, the staff, and the donors who make this a reality. As a parent, as a community member, I am indebted to every single one of you. And lastly, Mubarak. Mubarak and congratulations to all the graduates on your accomplishments. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, reward you, inspire you, and guide you, and finally, a special shout out to my graduates from the Bay Area. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Jazakallahu khairan Imam Tahir. Inshallah, that concludes the Arabic graduation ceremony. And now we'll move, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala, into the foundational Islamic sciences graduation. This is the second year of the Qalam program. And I have to say, just to give an understanding of what exactly this program is, that the reality is that there are so many people in our communities who have a lot of questions. Very simple questions for anyone who's studying at Qalam. But that in and of itself is the reason that this program has to exist. There is no one age group that has a monopoly on trying to understand our deen. And this program is one that allows and gives the opportunity for people of all ages to come and gain what the name says, a foundational understanding of our deen. Because when there is a strong foundation, then no matter what obstacles and hardships exist around us, which there are plenty of in the world, we are able to navigate them and come out on the other side. This program is very, very, very important. And I encourage anyone who's either here and hasn't participated, hasn't learned Arabic, or who's watching online, to make it a point to try and engage in studies like the Year 2 program. I'm going to invite, inshallah, the, one of the teachers of the Year 2 program, Sheikh Mikhail Ahmed Smith, to give the first speech. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salam, ala sayyidina wa nabiyyana wa maulana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Um, the students, they used to uh, not show me enough respect, so I got a cane. <laughs> and I thought maybe they would, uh, you know, show me a little bit more respect. No, I'm just joking. Uh, it's been an honor. Um, I teach two classes to year two. Um, and I'm going to call it year two because Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal rahimahullah ta'ala, he used to walk around with an ink pot. And an ink pot was a sign that you were a beginning student. Um, and one of the things that my students, I hope you have learned from me, is that uh, maybe you should check what Imam Razi says. Maybe you should check what Imam Qurtubi says. Imam Ahmed, he used to walk around with this ink pot, which was a sign of being a beginner student. And his, one of his sons used to say, Dad, you gotta, you're embarrassing us, you know? You're a big sheikh, but you're walking around with the kaida in your hand or your, your, your irregular verbs charts in your hands. And he would say, no, I'll be with this ink pot from the cradle unto the grave. The Prophet wasallam, he said in a hadith, Innama bu'ithtu mu'alliman, I have been sent as a teacher. An alam is something that leaves an imprint. I hope we left a prophetic imprint on your heart. This journey of knowledge, where you're at right now, to me, I saw a friend of mine, Haytham, in here. Uh, he ran, I ran my first 5K with him. <laughs> and um, while we're running, every now and then there would be a few brothers and sisters on the side. And you feel like quitting and you don't feel like going forward and they would, you would look at them and they would say, keep going, you're almost there. Right now, this recognition of year two and what you've accomplished, I'm here to tell you, you have to keep learning. You have to keep going. We're in a time when you got enough riz, you can get the followers. You don't need to learn the verbs. You don't even need to know who court to be is. You just got a name drop a few times. But you have dedicated yourself to learning the ilm, learning the knowledge. And you have to keep going, you have to keep growing, you have to keep moving forward. And I want to speak to the fathers and the mothers in the room who allowed and supported your children when they came up to you and said, I want to stop and just sit with shuyukh. You must have lost your mind and said, what's going on with my kid? What lecture did he watch or she watch on YouTube? The Quran tells us that 
Salih, his people, had high expectations from him. But he started to talk about Allah. He started to talk about Akhirah. And the Quran tells us that they said, We had so many high hopes in you before you started talking about religion and God and this and that. We are at the precipice of an amazing moment in Islamic history. And I'm not speaking with any hyperbole here. I was told when I first converted that in Pakistan and Egypt and other countries that the child that had the least intelligence was normally sent to study deen. This is what I've been told. Is that true? I was told that if you were the smartest child, you became a doctor. If you were a little lower than that, you became an engineer, a little lower, a lawyer. And then after that, you were sent to sit with the shuyukh. We are at a very beautiful moment in Islamic history because this room is filled with young, brilliant minds. Brilliant minds. Imam Shafi says there's only two types of ilm, ilm al-tib and ilm al-deen. And we are at the precipice at a time when we are seeing droves when it comes to Zaytuna and Qalam and IOK and people are learning the deen and going forward and showing that it's not either or, but it's the completion of the complete Muslim. You have dedicated a year of your life. And when people around you said, why are you going to Dallas? What are you doing? And you didn't really have an answer except there's something in my heart calling me to study this dean. I'm on the sideline telling you, here's some water, keep running. The ummah needs you. And while you may be thinking, I don't have much in me. I'm just... Here for barakah, as Huda keeps saying. <laughs> the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Don't leave us barakah. The Prophet said, You are helped, you are provided by the weak ones. By the weak ones. This was a beautiful year. We laughed together. We definitely cried together. I mean, Abdurrahman cries all the time. <laughs> I'm trying to cover for my tears. We laughed together. We cried together. I got angry at a few of you a few times. That's becoming rare in modern Islamic studies. Right, Sana? Where's Sana? <laughs> <laughs> this is how we learn through all of these emotions. And yesterday, we had the most beautiful class as we read about the passing away of the Rasul Sallallahu This knowledge is sweet. And my only hope is that I've nurtured your thirst and made you want more. Keep learning. Keep studying. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. And I'm done. I pray that my Qasim, my Maria, and my Karima are like you one day. I don't know. I just hope that one day they're sitting in these seats like you. Some of the parents in this room, you never taught your children anything about Islam. Let's be real. But Allah bless their hearts, and you are being blessed because of them. Some of us try to teach our children everything we can, but we don't know how they'll turn out. I admire you today. I admire your pursuit. Congratulations, but the race is not over. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum. I want to also mention that the second year of the program, the first year and the second year are really a two-year track that anyone can join into the first year and take the second year and then step off before going into Alamiya. It's a separate kind of uh, program that you're able to do. So if you want to study for one year, you can do the Arabic. If you're able to test out of Arabic, then you can start with year two. And so you either have a one or two year track for the Alamiya, pro uh, for the uh, foundational studies program. Next, inshallah, I'd like to invite Ustala Fatima Let up to speak.
Assalamualaikum. I think for the first time in column history, we have a timer. <laughs> it's actually, never mind. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Rabbish Rahli Sadri wa Yasri Amri Wahlu Lokrata Milisani Yafkahu Koli Rabbi Zitni Inma Rabbi Zitni Inma Rabbi Zitni Inma. First and foremost, I would like to say to my year two class, Alhamdulillah, you all made it out of my classroom. <laughs> and though I have the reputation of being the scariest teacher on campus, which is not true at all, I'm pretty sure Mufti Kimani takes the cake, but <laughs> no shade, no shade. <laughs> though I, <laughs> what shade? <laughs> though I have the reputation of being the scariest teacher on campus, I hope I had the reputation of having the most fun classroom as well. Alhamdulillah, this year we covered a lot of ground, and in the last three weeks or two weeks of class, I pushed you guys further than your limits. And I know from the looks on your face when I would assign you two pages, and then I would say, if you can, read a little bit more, and Sana Shakir will look like she's gonna die in her sleep, in her seat, <laughs> while Amin avoided eye contact. <laughs> and Maimuna somehow was always ready to read. <laughs> you didn't realize exactly where you would be today, and you didn't realize how much you would grow. You did not realize what you would gain, and you did not realize the people that you would know, but Allah SWT allowed you to be here. And he made space for you, and he opened up these doors of knowledge for a reason. And like I told you all yesterday, I'll tell you all today, don't forget that this is a journey that is not done and it's a journey that is meant to transform you. And if it's the case that you truly came here out of sincerity and you truly came here seeking the Father of Allah, then it is your responsibility now to be grateful to Allah SWT. We covered in Surtun Namal, which shout out to you all because we made it to Surtun Namal, despite Sheikh Nasser's, you know, <laughs> haterness that he had. We made it to Surah to Nawal, alhamdulillah, and we covered a beautiful ayah after Suleiman encounters the ants. And what does he say so beautifully as he's inspired by these creation of, this creation of Allah? He says, Rabbi, and you guys know this is my favorite word, that, oh my Lord, the one who has nourished me, the one who has taken care of me, the one who has allowed me to be in the space that I am in, the one who has gotten me to this point. Oh, zi'ni. Now the word oh, zi is very beautiful because it means for someone to restrain, like restrain me or confine me. And what the scholars say is that Suleiman is asking Allah SWT to allow for him to be confined in a particular way. And that particular way is an ashkur, bin, an, an ashkur ni'matak that I will always be grateful for your blessing. That if it's the case that I'm, I'm, I'm refrained and I'm confined and I'm, you know, there's things that I wanna do in this world or whatever, don't let me lose being grateful. Let that be something that I'm always holding with me on my path and on my journey. Some of the Mufassirun would then translate it, as you guys read, as inspire me. Put it in my heart because wahi is something that is in the heart. Inspire me to always be grateful for your blessing. Alati an'amta alayya, the one that you have bestowed upon me, wa ala walidayya, and upon my parents. Wa anna, wa anna, wa an, sorry, wa an a'mala saliha, and that I do good deeds, taradahu, that you are pleased with. Because what we do know is that alhamdulillah, Allah SWT has given us the ability to be able to go and do good. And we've talked about that a true sign or a true testament to one's sincerity is the action that they put behind the words of what they're gonna say. And so after this, Sulaiman makes dua that Allah SWT allows for him to do righteous deeds, but not only just righteous deeds, but righteous deeds that are accepted by Allah. When Ibrahim السلام, raised the foundations of the Kaaba, arguably one of the most great, one of the greatest acts in our tradition, he says, Rabbana taqabbal minna, O Allah accept from us. And this is such a humbling way of understanding your actions and what you put forth, because then you always attribute it back to the one who it should be attributed back to, and that is Allah. So even in doing righteous deeds and asking for Allah SWT to be pleased with it, 
you're still showing that level of gratitude and thankfulness to Allah. And then he says, And into me by means of your mercy with those who are your righteous servants, who tried, who made effort, who pushed forward, who had ihsan, who had ikhlas, and they just wanted the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa What we do here and what we strive for again and again, day in and day out, is to develop and become better people. We're not in the business of arguing. We're not in the business of fighting. We're not being in, in the business of being boastful. We're in the business of trying to be better. And it's each and every single one of your responsibility to carry that business all forward. If you're here and you think to yourself that I graduated and I did something amazing, I did something great, you accomplished something, yes, by the grace and the father of Allah. You did not do it by your own action. You did not do it by your own effort. Rather, it was the father and the favor that Allah SWT has put inside of you. And so today, the words that I would like for you all to say is, oh my Lord, I seek, to, I seek for you to constantly and consistently put it in my heart to consistently be grateful to you and to do actions and deeds that are pleasing to you. I pray that Allah SWT allows us all to gather in a gathering much better than this. I pray that Allah SWT puts immense barakah in every single one of your lives. That Allah SWT allows you all to be people who are beacons of light in this deen. I pray that Allah SWT allows us to be able to drink from the beloved hands of the Prophet Muhammad SAW. Subhanaka Allahumma bihamdika. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka. Wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Next, inshallah, I'd like to invite the first student speaker, Sister uh, Madiha Irfan. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum to our teachers, parents, classmates, and guests. Year two, we made it. After nine months of flailing around in difficult Arabic texts, grueling homework assignments, anxiety about reading in front of our teachers, and class at unexpected hours of the day, sometimes at 7.30 a.m. and sometimes at 9 p.m. Thank you, Sheikh Mikhail. <laughs> Here we are finishing our foundational Islamic studies year. To all of our teachers, thank you for sharing this prophetic inheritance with us. Thank you for being so patient with us, especially when our questions never seem to end. Thank you for being role models of what it means to practice what you preach. We have, learned, we have learned so much from you in terms of academics, but we have learned far more by witnessing how you carry yourselves with Ihsan. To our parents and families, thank you for supporting us through this journey. We would not be here today without your care and du'as. To my year two classmates, I was asked to share some wisdom with you today. I don't know why, because I certainly don't have any wisdom to offer. So what I'd like to do instead is to share with you what I think are the top three lessons that our teachers imparted to us this year. Lesson number one, studying Islam is not a replacement for having a relationship with Allah. We all began this year hoping that our studies would bring us closer to our creator. Our teachers taught us very early on though that in order to grow in our connection to Allah, we need to act on what we learn. Learning alone is not enough for knowledge only becomes true knowledge when we implement it in our own lives. 
On the first day of class, Asada Rabia told us that our relationship with the Quran can't just be an academic one. It has to be a personal one. She drilled into us the importance of reading and reflecting on the Quran daily as part of a spiritual regimen that would enrich our studies and our lives. Usada Fatima taught us that the Quran is like medicine, but medicine only works if you take it. Likewise, the Quran only touches you on a deeper level if you develop a personal relationship with it beyond the classroom, apply its messages in your life, and allow it to transform you. Mufti Kamani pushed us to maximize on our Quran khatams this Ramadan. <laughs> we may have felt intimidated by his expectations, but his consistent reminders about the doors that open through recitation of the Book of Allah encouraged us to read more Quran than we had ever read before. We found ourselves connecting with Allah's words in ways we never imagined. Lesson number two, be humble. Or as Sheikh Abdul Nasser so lovingly tells us, shut up. <laughs> because nobody cares what you think. <laughs> We may have finished year two, but we are still very much beginners in our journey of seeking knowledge. Through Usul, Sheikh taught us maturity in our understanding of our religion. He constantly reminded us that our deen is not a series of I think so's. <laughs> and we should think twice before trying to make any grand statements about it. Ustad Murphy taught us to be like valleys, not like mountains. Because just as rain settles in the valley, not on the mountains, so too does knowledge take root in the heart of the humble person. Our study of Aqida drove this point home for us. As we sought neat, logical answers to all of our existential questions, Osad reminded us that while intellect is powerful and important, it does have a ceiling. And we have to humbly accept the fact that we cannot know everything that Allah knows. Even more than these examples and metaphors, we have learned what true humility looks like through the examples of our teachers every day. Lesson number three, maintain your sense of wonder. I'll never forget the day in Sheikh Mikhail's tafsir class when we were reading a verse about rain clouds. Sheikh started talking about running around in the rain with his kids. He asked us if we did this too, and when no one said anything, <laughs> Sheikh said, why did you grow up and forget that life is special? He went on to talk about how amazing the clouds are. They're like chunks of water hanging in the sky. <laughs> time and time again, our teachers reminded us to examine the world with a sense of wonder that leads us back to being in awe of our creator. Usad Suhaib also embodies this sense of wonder. After each hadith we read in his class, he pauses and thoughtfully says, mm. <laughs> As though he's reading it again for the first time. Through his example, he reminds us to always look at the words of our beloved Prophet وسلم, with fresh eyes and soft hearts, ready to learn something new and to have our perspective changed. May Allah allow us to remember and implement these lessons in our lives. May he accept our efforts and forgive our shortcomings. May he bless and reward our parents and our teachers. Ameen. Jazakum Allah khairan wa assalamu alaikum. Jazakum Allah khairan, Sister Madiha. So our next speaker will be Ustad Abdurrahman Murphy. Assalamu alaikum. 
بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ما شاء الله مديها ما شاء الله I don't think we expected anything less ما شاء الله um, Thank you to everyone for coming Thank you for the parents and the families and the friends uh, All the staff ما شاء الله the instructors my مشايخ I say my مشايخ and I mean that uh, the students, mashallah. Um, I feel very out of place because I'm so inspired by everyone around me. I'm inspired by the students. Um, I'm inspired by the teachers. I, I'm, I'm in awe. And I genuinely, in, in this very humbling moment, feel so grateful to Allah uh, that I get to call this my family and my colleagues. I don't say my students, because Sheikh Abdel Nasser says, you don't have students. <laughs> Qalam has students. I say, you're right, Sheikh. Um, in, that, in that sense of wonder, I remember when Sheikh first asked me to teach Aqid and Tazkiyah, and I was again in shock, and I didn't understand why, but it was something predetermined by Allah. Okay. Right. I don't only cry, I'm also really funny. And um, something else that I had to come to terms with, with Allah's Qadr this year, was that whenever I got to class and was able to start, which was whenever Sheikh Mikhail decided to stop. <laughs> you took a shot at me, man. I had to take a shot at you. The cane does not make me sympathize, okay? I was on crutches for too long. Sheikh Mikhail, Sheikh Mikhail and I share a special bond of being the only two instructors this year that had to have surgery in the year. And uh, mine was much less severe, much less critical. And, uh, you know, I was able to teach, but, um, you know, there's a little bit of pain. But Sheikh Mikhail, mashallah, was committed to getting back in the classroom as soon as possible, even though we were only a few weeks left in the school year. But mashallah, his love for Allah, his love for the students, his love for the mashayikh. I went and visited him, and he was just like, I miss it, man. I miss it. You know Sheikh Mikhail. And then I said, I know. He goes, no, you're not feeling me. I said, Sheikh, it's not Wednesday night. It's not Wednesday night. You can't tell me I'm not feeling you. Um, I'm sitting up here. I'm standing up here, and I'm, I'm, I'm covered in uh, brown, sugar, brown sugar cinnamon syrup and espresso and milk because we served coffee after Jumu'ah for the community. And um, I was going to talk about something else, but I figured that when I stained my shirt, Musa, my son, who was back there with me, I was like, oh no, Baba, you stained your shirt. You have syrup on your shirt. And he's like, and now you have the graduation. And I thought, you know, everything is, everything has a purpose. Everything has a reason, right? How do you teach Aqidah and say, why me? You can't do that. And I, I thought to myself that there was a story of, um, this happened last Tuesday, of, of a, um, a brother who comes here for Jumu'ah and he comes to Tuesday nights to the Haraka here at Roots and he, um, he was wearing scrubs and he ordered a coffee and it was myself and uh, usually I'm joined by Ustad Ubaidullah or Ustad Fatima or Ustad Safi, you know, we're all back there making coffee. And he, he pointed something out, you know, he was wearing scrubs. So I asked him, I said, did you come straight from work? He said, yeah. I said, what do you do? You know, what kind of medicine are you in? And he said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a surgeon. I do spine, and I said, oh yeah, my colleague, Sheikh Mikhail, just had a spine surgery, and he goes, I know I was there. And he said, I went and I watched it, and um, you know, he didn't do the surgery, but he was there just observing, and he scrubbed in, and he stood there, and it was a five hour long surgery. And he didn't have to be there, he's not making any money off of it, he was just there for the love of you know, his teacher. And as I'm sitting there listening to him describe, listening to, listening to the brother describe this to me, I'm making his drink, and then you know, he finishes the story, and I say, man, may Allah bless you, and he says, uh, you know, it's really amazing that one of the things I love about you guys, the Khadam and, uh, teachers and you know, the staff here at the, at the campus, is that you guys are always in the service of us. And he said, you know, I went to go and you know, spend that huge chunk of time overlooking and making sure that Sheikh Mikhail was okay because this is just something that we can do, right? You guys always take care of us, we can take care of you kind of thing. And um, one of my favorite narrations 
and forgive me if I get emotional, because <laughs> whenever I talk about the prophet, so I'm like, I have trouble. Uh, <clears throat> when he arrived in Medina, the hadith of Abdullah bin Salam, that I'm sure you covered in Sheikh Mikhail's class, uh, that ended that day at 1210. <laughs> the joke is my class starts at 1145. <laughs> when the Prophet Sallallahu arrived in Medina, and Abdullah bin Salam, who at this time is a Jewish rabbi, is not Muslim yet, and he, he narrates in this hadith in Tirmidhi, he narrates and he says that when the Prophet Sallallahu arrived to Medina, everybody started to rush and they were excited and they knew that it was, it was going to happen, that he was arriving and they were waiting for the day that he was going to arrive specifically at the, the city of Medina. And then he says that when the Prophet Sallallahu arrived, everybody rushed out and he said, I was amongst them. And he said that, subhanAllah, when the Prophet Sallallahu came and he lifted his face or he, 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 people could see his face, he said a line that just shakes me because at this time, he knew nothing about the Prophet ﷺ besides what everyone else knew. But he said, simply upon seeing his face, he said, As soon as I saw him, something in my heart knew. Instantly I understood. I knew that the Prophet ﷺ was not a liar. This is not the face of a liar. And I thought that was, I mean, it shakes me when you hear that because this is a person, and then you think, okay, maybe he's just buying into the hype. He's surrounded by all these people. They're all excited. You know, he's emotional. He's like there. But then, and this is again, there's no coincidence, right? Aqidah, there's no coincidence. What does the Prophet Sallallahu say? The Prophet Sallallahu when he begins, and qala ayyuha nas afshu salam wata'imu ta'am wasilu arham I mean, he says, oh people, everybody, number one, spread peace. Be a person that gives salam, but also that is salam. Like you walk in the room and people feel peace. And this is something that everybody works on. Myself, we, we were trying to become people that our presence makes people feel at peace. Because that's the Prophet Sallallahu making sure that the knowledge that you gained this year and the things that you learned don't make you a person that causes anxiety in people. Anxi making a person feel anxious is not a proof of your religiosity. In fact, the opposite is true. The Prophet ﷺ was somebody that when he would be around people, their worries would disappear. What did Hanzala say when he, he thought he was a hypocrite because he's, he was so impacted by the presence of the Prophet ﷺ that he felt, why can't I feel like this all the time? So be a person who carries peace. The second, وَطَعِمُ الطَّعَامُ وَطَعِمُ الطَّعَامُ Feed food. I remember Shaykh when we read this hadith together, he said, a lot of people write into this, the translation, feed people who are in need food. And he said, that's, that's already a given. That part is known. Muslims take care of those who are in need. But he said, the Prophet ﷺ here did not add a condition or a statement of contingency. He said, Muslims feed food. Everyone thinks I'm joking when I'm like, you want to combat Islamophobia? Bring samosas to work. I've never seen an Islamophobe beat a samosa. <laughs> and, and it's not, it, it, it's funny, it's cute, but it's also very real. A human cannot hate a person that feeds them. It's impossible. You know, when, when the Jesuits, I'm, I'm going on my Sheikh Hamza Yusuf tangent now. When, when, the, when, when the Catholics were a persecuted minority in this country religiously, they had a choice. And if you notice around this country, you'll see hospitals that are named after Jesuit priests and Catholic legends because they understood that service to humanity will disarm people from their hatred. How can you hate an institution that saved your mother, saved your child, saved your spouse, saved you? How can you hate a religion of people when they were the ones, when you walk in through their doors and you're in their room and the doctors there are all part of that faith? So service to humanity, feeding people food, that's how you win the hearts of those who are around you. And the Prophet ﷺ continued, keep the family ties, 
Don't get too big for those people who knew you when you were small. Don't become a person that loses focus on those people who have always been there with you. Pray in the night while people are sleeping. Now, if you did usul al-fiqh, hopefully you did. This is not a allowance to combine all your salah at night. Right? This is like how the internet would interpret this. This is obviously we're talking here not about the non-obligatory prayers. What should a person do? They should focus on developing their own personal piety, not at the expense of their community. Developing personal piety is not something that you can shoo people away because of. Because your personal piety is also built upon the fact that you have to take care of those people around you. Imam Tahawi in his Aqidah text that we were not destined to finish. <laughs> we will, inshallah. When? Allah knows best. He says, and I want to end with this. In the middle of a section talking about major sins, amazing, Egyptian Hanafis, there's just something about us. <laughs> Imam Tahawi says, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ كُلُّهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ الرحمن. In the middle of a section on people who commit major sins, he says, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ كُلُّهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ الرَّحْمَانِ وَأَكْرَمْهُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَطْوَعُهُمْ وَأَتْبَعُهُمْ الْقُرْآنِ he says that every single believer is one of the close friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, and of course, the ones who are the, the closest and the ones who, the, those people, the, the, con the condition he's saying is that they try their best to obey and to adhere and follow the, the, the command of the Quran. Why am I finishing my sessions with you with this? You cannot do what the Prophet Sallallahu did unless you believe that every believer is a close friend of Allah. If you hate Muslims, if you hate brothers and sisters, if you judge them, if you look down upon them, if you, if you have any rancor in your heart, any void of love in your heart for the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu you cannot be like him. You cannot follow the Quran like he did. This condition of faith, of theology, that Imam, Imam Tahawi is teaching us is contingent upon loving those people that the Prophet Sallallahu loved. And that's why when the doctor was marveling at the fact that a teacher of a class is pouring his coffee, and another teacher of another class took his order, and another teacher of another class is the one who pulled the shot of espresso, and he's sitting there like marveling, like, how is it that you guys are teaching, but you're making my drink? We, we responded, and we always do, by saying, this is what our teachers taught us that may be more important than the words that we say is the way that we make you feel. We ask Allah Ta'ala to accept from us. I pray that Allah accepts from everybody. I pray that Allah overlooks our shortcomings because His mercy is greater than our mistakes. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen, Subhanak Allah, Bihamdik, Nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastafir kuwa tubi laik. Zakallah khair, Ustaz Murphy. Next, inshallah, I'd like to call our second student speaker, Hamza Gia. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Respected scholars, honorable guests, and my fellow classmates. Today, alhamdulillah, I feel both humbled and grateful for this opportunity to share my journey at Qalam, and a journey that has been filled with different challenges, growth, and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I embarked on this path of trying to learn, it didn't start off as smooth as I had some very personal challenges that didn't allow me to go somewhere and study. I remember my conversation with Sheikh Abdul Nasser back in 2015, where he told me that online isn't a possibility, Akalam. But I can definitely get started with a tutor, Sister Atifa, Usada Atifa, who never answered me, by the way. But, <laughs> <laughs> and he said to continuously strive and Allah will facilitate. Even in my corporate life, working from home never was an option. However, little did I know that Allah's plans were greater than any obstacle I could have imagined 
And when the world was hit with the COVID-19 pandemic, Allah opened a door of blessings for many. I thank Allah and I thank Qalam for their passion and its wisdom to continue to serve the Muslim Ummah at large, that they translated to an online program and opened an opportunity where many felt part of a home and were enveloped with the love of our teachers, mentors, and traditional knowledge to be a student. If we can give them a round of applause. A valuable lesson that for some a difficulty is a blessing and for others that difficulty, for some a difficulty is a blessing and for others it is a difficulty. But for this, alhamdulillah for me, it was a blessing in disguise. While the transition from traditional learning to the virtual world had its challenges, it also brought, alhamdulillah, a group of students from all over the world together. And here we are today, alhamdulillah. As we move to the next stage of our life, some continuing, and some who might continue in different ways as we leave here from this uh, journey of second year, as, as we've been told, that we have a lot to still learn. Um, the environment is not going to be the same. You won't have a Mufti Kamani to call you out or quote Urdu poetry to uplift you in class after he roasts you. You won't have Ustad Abdurrahman Murphy making you cry at the end of every class. And you won't have a Sheikh Mikail or Ustad Fatima who completely wake you up in the morning every day of the week. I don't know, I think it's the coffee from Roots, but somehow they have it. And you won't have classmates who have your back or, in my case, take notes for you, alhamdulillah. Thank you for all the notes. Rather, you will see an environment where you'll have to take the inner, deeper self and carry yourself with what you have learned. There will be days where people don't want to hear you. There will be days where you'll feel like you're a complete stranger. And as you try to serve in any capacity, it will be full of different challenges. At that very moment, you'll need to use the love and wisdom of our beloved Prophet wasallam. Your teachings from your teachers, their work ethic, and most importantly, the will to continue to do the work despite the noise around you. One of the first words that we learned in class in year one was fa'ala, to do. Regardless of what life throws at you, it is this year and after you complete and whatever you learn, this word should be instilled in you. I think we've done enough charts. You need to get back up and do the work now. I must also acknowledge the, un the support and guidance of our instructors at Qalam, all the people in the back end that did the work, they embraced challenges of online teaching with great wisdom, adapting different methodologies to ensure that we felt as part of we were in the class. The dedication, patience, and expertise have been instrumental in shaping my journey in specific, and I'm seeing everyone else as well, as the growth in my, in, my, in my learning of knowledge. And I can't forget the support of my parents, my wife Javeria, and all in my two children, who allowed me to keep taking classes on my days off. And if you look into your life, you'll see people who are part of your journey, so don't forget to, make them, don't forget to keep them your du'as. Lastly, in my 10, 10 plus years of experience of teaching Quran and being a part-time imam, and now part of a Quran program in Houston called Hamd, I can tell you that Houston is definitely better than Dallas. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but having mentors is one of the only reasons I haven't lost my way after Allah. Because of my mentors and teachers, despite them being busy, being able to find time for the countless students they have. As you continue your journey, wherever you may be, keep in touch with your mentors, peers, and keep taking advice from them as part of your growth. One day as you serve, you'll start to see the wisdom and mentors that sometimes won't make sense at that moment. The day that it makes sense to you, you'll then maybe have others reach out to you to become their mentors. But most importantly, at that moment will be a step of growth in your pursuit of knowledge. And that same conversation in 2015, when I, my dad was struggling with severe health issues, I had the opportunity to go study. And I remember Sheikh telling me, you can't go study. You have to work and support your family. It didn't make sense then, but it all makes sense now. Let us remember that true knowledge is not confined to the walls of a classroom, but rather resides within the hearts and actions of those who try to seek it sincerely. I know we may not be sincere waking up every day or following the recordings, but we tried our best and we ask Allah to accept. We ask Allah to bless our teachers, our mentors, our parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give health to our parents who are here, who are alive, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive 
our parents who may have passed away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our children to be able to learn this deen and serve it. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa ta'ala barakatuh. Jazakumullahu khair. Inshallah, next I'd like to invite Ustada Rabia Razzaq. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من ألق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم استقل الله العظيم This is the first revelation that the Prophet ﷺ receives on a very difficult path that at the moment he had no idea that he was about to tread on. Um, this is, these are the same verses that the students um, in year one and year two, we've spent countless days. Sometimes I think at one point it became like a whole month that we just kept on going back to about wahi, about the journey of wahi, about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that moment where he receives wahi. And what was the first thing that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala commands the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and us when this beautiful light is gifted to all of mankind, iqra, to recite. To recite, bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq, by the assistance in the name of the one who created us. And then Allah reminds us of all of our realities. Khalaq al-insana min alaq, where did we come from? Who were we? Something that was not even mentioned. Something that was so microscope, microscopic. Nothing. And then, اقرأ وربك الأكرم Recite, and your Lord is the most generous. Your Lord is the most generous. Your Lord is the most generous. الذي علم بالقلم The one who taught by the pen. علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم The one who taught mankind that which they did not know. These verses of Surah Al-Alaq are the same ayat that not just changed the Prophet Sallallahu life, but became the light that changed all of Mecca, all of Medina, and from there this light starts spreading all over the world from generation to generation to generation. And now us sitting in Dallas, Texas in 2023, we are blessed with this same gift that continues to become a light and a source of light wherever it goes. And every time that we hold on to this and connect with this and, and reflect and go on a journey to full, fill our lives with these verses and this light, it becomes this, it becomes this, um, this domino effect that not just lights our hearts up, but everybody around us. And wherever you go, it's nur that, sh that spreads and increases and increases. So, at, at, the end of this G, at the end of this year, um, as all the instructors have mentioned, it is such a blessing that where people all over the world, they spend an entire year you know, earning six figures, maybe um, you know, accomplishing big things, buying a house, starting new businesses, right? going on new life stages. Allah SWT gave us a year where we continue to show up every single day and earn from the inheritance of the Prophet ﷺ. What a blessing. It's a type of blessing that you really, um, you know, in the moment right now, we may be able to feel it, but it's something that not even a lifetime of shukr could, could be able to um, really truly allow us to realize what a blessing it is. Um, Ibn al Ta'ala in his um, Al Hikam, he says, Whoever does not do shukr upon a blessing, you expose it to just fly away, drift away. It'll start disappearing, right? But whoever learns how to do shukr of a blessing, you almost tie it down with a rope. It becomes fixed. It becomes a fixed part of your life. And so, you know, today it may feel very natural um, to be able to do shukr of the journey that you have taken and that the families have supported, 
but the test of gratitude will really come when you're maybe on your way back home and your tire goes flat. What's the first thing that you will say? Your gratitude will be tested when you go home and you, you, know, you get into a rough argument with somebody you love. That's where your gratitude for what you've learned will be tested. Your gratitude will be tested when it's summertime and all you feel like doing is sitting on the couch watching Netflix and you think maybe I should open up you know, some of my books, review my surf charts, right? And when nothing comes to mind, instead of closing it, you keep trying. That's where your gratitude is going to be tested. And your gratitude will be tested when you're, you're faced with crossroads about I, do, doing the right thing or doing that thing which may be difficult but easy and you still choose to do the hard thing for the sake of Allah. That's where your gratitude is tested. Because shukr is not just done through the tongue. Scholars mention that first shukr is done through the qalb and then shukr is done through the lisan and then the manifestation of shukr is done through your limbs, through the way we live our lives. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to truly do shukr with all three, deep within our heart, allow it to us to constantly express it through our, through our words and through, our, through what we say. And may Allah subhanahu wa allow us to live lives of shukr in constant submission to him. The last thing I will say is that um, along with doing shukr for the journey that we have been on and the experience that we've all been able to share, it's incredibly important to remember to thank all of those people that, were, that contributed even a moment in allowing us to reach this point. You know, there was a, um, there was a man by the name of Muhammad ibn Ismail, who in his um, young age, very young age when he was an infant, he was tested with blindness. He hit the two most beloved things um, became, uh, through which we see became a test and his mother sits by his bedside day and night constantly making dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring her son's eyesight back. Night after night, she, she continues to make this dua. And eventually, subhanAllah, she sees in Siyah um, al it's mentioned that eventually her, 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 she sees a dream and she sees the dua that she has been making for her son finally manifest and her son regains his eyesight as a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that even at the, do the doctors at the time were not able to understand because they couldn't find any treatment for it, right? And this child goes on to become Muhammad ibn Ismail ibn, Ibra ibn Ibrahim ibn Mughira al-Bukhari whose mother made dua and begged Allah day in and day night, day, day in and, and, and night to just bring the eyesight of her son back. And that son uses those eyes for the rest of his life to look at the words of the Prophet ﷺ and memorize the words of the Prophet ﷺ. And that's the same, those same narrations that we use and constantly look at and read to fall in love with the Prophet ﷺ. So shukr, not just for the blessings that we have, but especially for those people at that stage of our life where we couldn't even remember who prayed for us who cared for us when we couldn't even walk, when we couldn't even eat, when we couldn't even get up ourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all those people in our lives who have been part of our journey, especially in the most difficult times, the most unknown times. Those are the people that truly deserve our khidmah and our appreciation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept um, from them, may Allah subhanahu wa accept from the parents that are in this room, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from the students. It has been such a honor and a blessing um, to be part of your journey and it is, it gives so much hope. You know, now, alhamdulillah, I have a little one who's 19 months um, and she's already acting like a teenager. So I'm constantly thinking, how in the world am I gonna actually raise a teenager when my 19 month old already runs my life, you know? And so you guys are our hope and it is, it is, it brings such comfort, alhamdulillah, it brings such comfort to see such beautiful people. It is, it, you know, you all are, are the reason that there's so much barakah in our lives, alhamdulillah. Um, and with that, uh, I will just congratulate you guys once again. May Allah SWT accept your journey and may Allah SWT continue to open endless doors of mercy, khayr, um, and closeness to him. I mean, subhanakwa hamdik na shadwan la ila ila antun astaghfiru kwa antubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khayna. Next, inshallah, we'll have Ustad Suhaib.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It truly is amazing every year to see, here, to see you all come to this point. It's truly amazing to see where you guys started and where you guys ended. And alhamdulillah, I have the honor of standing here and calling out your names to see you guys come and, uh, and receive your diploma certificate. I don't know, whatever we're calling it, certificate, um, whatever it may be. But to celebrate the occasion of you all completing this difficult year. I'll share with you guys a couple of very small things and then we'll go on with the program as we're uh, wrapping up our program for today. One thing, the first thing I'll share with you guys is that as much as I've picked on you guys this past year, and I'm sorry, I apologize, Abdullah, I don't know where you are, I'm sorry, right? Um, Abdullah was my uh, regular uh, punching bag, unfortunately, in, uh, in my class. But, <laughs> but as much as I picked on you guys during the class, I'll share with you guys that this class, in, and including my other classes as well, that was the highlight of the week. That was the highlight of my week that I was able to join and uh, read hadith with you guys. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, um, I didn't even realize, by the way, that you said that. I didn't even realize I was doing that. But, um, but the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I'll share one last thing with you guys before I continue. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said that it's very possible, and many times, someone who is understanding of a hadith or understanding of the deen transmits that knowledge to someone that is more understanding than him. And I wonder and I pray that that's what's happening here. That anything that I have uh, communicated, I've shared, any hadith that we read, I'm confident to say that you guys were able to understand it better than I was. And the, you guys would be able to benefit from it better than I. And that is the goal. That is the objective. So I pray for all of you guys that you guys not only use this as an opportunity to um, come closer to Allah as, as is the goal for myself as well, but I pray that you continue in this journey of knowledge, you continue in this journey of ilm, and that this is just a milestone, that this is just the first stop in a long journey of continuing your studies and continuing working on this relationship with Allah and with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa so without further ado, I ask for maybe 30 seconds so that we can uh, get set up and then I'll go through the names of all of our, um, our graduating or completing students um, to come up and then receive their diplomas. Bismillah. So um, I ask uh, all the students as we call you guys up that you guys come up from this side and then uh, we'll take a picture right here uh, on stage and then we'll continue. Bismillah. And the last thing is, I apologize. I sincerely apologize if I have, if I am not uh, pronouncing your name correctly. Um, that's my mistake, and uh, um, I apologize again. Bismillah. To begin, first person I'd like to call up is Sister Aisha Zahir. Brother Abdullah Ahmed. <laughs> Brother Abdullah Sheikh. Brother Abrar Pulani.
Sister Aisha Ahmed. <laughs> Sister Aisha Nana Ahmed. Brother Amin Ahmed. Sister Asia Qidwai. Sister Aisha Ashraf. Brother Bilal Aziz. Brother Burhan Muhammad. Sister Elhan Jama. <laughs> Sister Esragul Bakhtaya. <laughs> Brother Fahim Dalal. <laughs> Brother Hamza Gia. Sister Hannah Mahmoud. <laughs> Sister Hiba Khan. <laughs> Sister Huda Harwis. Brother Humayu Khan. <laughs> Brother Ibrahim Mahmoud. <laughs> Sister Jessica Hassan. Sister Madiha Irfan. <laughs> Sister Maryam Mubin. Sister Maryam Tori. <laughs> Sister Maimuna Nadim. Brother Muaz Al Barbi. <laughs> Brother Muhammad Al Taba. <laughs> Sister Nefertiti Rogers. Step, step. 
Sister Noor Kose. Sister Nuseiba Virk. Brother Rami El Bekaili. Brother Rayyan Quraishi. Brother Ruman Patwari. Sister Sabrine Bayou. <laughs> Sister Safa Muhammad. <laughs> Brother Safi Khan. Okay, keep it down, guys. No. <laughs> Sister Salma Ali. Sister Samiha Shafiq. Sister Sana Khan. <laughs> Sister Sana Shakir. <laughs> Sister Sana Tarakji. <laughs> this is <shot>. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sister Shaila Shagufta. <laughs> Sister Sumaya Al Tuwisi. Sister Sundu Suleiman. <laughs> Sister Sumaya Khan. <laughs> Sister Wafa Saeed. <laughs> Sister Yusra Yunus. And last but not least, Brother Yusuf Islam. Jazakumullah <laughs> khair, everybody again, and um, I'll pass it on for the next, the closing remarks. Barakallah fikum, and congratulations to all the graduates. Inshallah, the closing remarks for this program, which are not the end of the day, as we do have an open house here that will go from after Asr, which will have activities, food, balance houses, face painting, balloon artists, as well as tours being done. So inshallah, stay after for the whole day. Sheikh Abdul Nasser will close our, Sheikh Abdul Nasser will close our program off, inshallah, with closing remarks and dua. Bismillahi wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. It's really, really uh, remarkable that 
you have people from all over this country dedicating their time, their energy, investing all their talent and their ability to understand and to learn this deen and this religion. It's something that um, even as recently as maybe 20 years ago was maybe not, f was something we couldn't fathom, was an idea that would have been far-fetched, but we saw it realized here today. So all the students here, mashallah, who completed the one-year program, those students who completed the two-year program, uh, once again, in conclusion, we congratulate you. Uh, we want to express our appreciation and admiration for your zeal for sacred knowledge, for your talab, for your desire, deep-rooted desire to learn this deen and this religion, to understand and be able to properly practice your faith. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows you to continue to grow in your faith, in your amal, in your practice, and in your knowledge. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you um, the torch bearers and the people who will carry this faith forward. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to raise pious and righteous people from your progeny and from your ranks. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make everything that was celebrated here today, may Allah accept it first and foremost. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a means of our salvation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a sadaqa jariya, a perpetual continuous charity on behalf of the families, the teachers, and everyone who contributed to it. And I want to end and conclude by um, making dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all of us, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never deprive, we ask that Allah never deprive us of this gift and this blessing and this privilege and this honor due to our shortcomings, uh, due to our indiscretions, due to our lack of respect and our lack of decorum. May Allah forgive us for all of that. May Allah never deprive us of this blessing. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always keep us on the path of learning and growing and practicing. Amin ya rabbil alameen. And once again, congratulations. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward and bless all of you. The snow cone truck has just arrived. <laughs> so, I will, yeah, there, <laughs> so I will take my cue from that. And we'll go ahead and conclude. Mashallah. Jazakum Allah khairan. Assalamu alaikum.